Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a kind of a breakdown of a setup that was done and taught a long time ago. The file is free to download from the description so that we can take a look together. Presets using this file are also free from the link in the description. The tutorial was taught in 3.0 utilizing basic knowledge of sine and cosine trigonometry. I've just made a tutorial about this beginner math again. So you can consider today as an opportunity to refresh memory and see how it's used in actual practice. This free file is also quite simple to annotate with comments. So you can find it full of comments and explanation that we will briefly go over now. The appended file is the really working file. So always start with it. Right inside the file, you will see the node editor and the 3D viewport. Information is important, but you can read that in your free time. If you play the animation, you see how it looks cool, but uh, we need to look into a bit more detail about how it's being built. In fact, if you check the title of the node tree, if you check the title of the node tree, it's not just a single one tree. Uh, you have another tree showing this specific knitting pattern made by the sign trigonometry. More details were explained in the old tutorial. The principle is exactly the same, only the presets are made more fancy and replaced by built-in Blender function, as you can see from these coloring and menus, which were not available in the past. Here, I can only say that the reason it works is because the sine function is basically a function going up and down. Then it can also go left and right, front and back at the same time. And therefore, the pattern interlaces together. Note this whole thing has been made into a knit surface preset, which will be used more conveniently for more advanced setups in 3D models. After all, you do not want to duplicate this setup over and over again when you are building something more practical. Hopefully, we will have time to discuss in the future, and or you can download the relevant file in my store following the description. Another note is that these parameters are very important. You can play around the amplitude frequency to see how the pattern will be changed. Practically speaking, this pattern itself is much more important than this particular animation. For our animation, the general principle is to mix position. For example, if I visualize the geometry before the set position, you will see these are just straight lines. And we add offset to make them a knitting pattern. Technically, you can remove these offsets by a. Technically, you can remove these offsets by vector mass scale to zero, but in this setup, I will use mix vector instead, so that I can set a start and end and mix with a single float value to control it. In the past, this was a preset because in old Blender we could only mix RGB and it was not very clear about the values on each axis. Therefore, let's go to our animation node tree. You can see that we start with a similar setup instancing straight lines, and uh, we have a trigonometry for the patterns, and uh, they are linking to multiple mixed vectors and animations, finally leading to the set position. Let's break down each important component by disabling other linkages and controlling the factor manually. The position is attached to a multiplier for a single straight line. So the position mixture is responsible for a single line to spread out for multiple ones. The second mix is the same as what we just discussed. Let's enable the link and mute the other two vector mass. And oops, I just found that I have uh, scales and <laughs> mix at the same time. Um, this is a mistake because they are doing the same function. Here, you can just remove the scale and the result is similar. As we know how this mix functions, let's look at the factor we are using. Directional fall is a critical concept in motion graphics. I will try to talk about it separately in more detail. But as you may see from the animation and its name, it's essentially a linear gradient from one side to the other, which is really suitable to expand this animation. I added some noise texture for each spline. This capture nowadays could be done with the evaluate on domain. Also, this capture may be put in 
a different position to make the entire node tree more performant. But I would rather leave out these tiny optimizations because they are working and the performance is still so good that it does not require optimization. There are two noises being added in the offsets. One noise is the general offset to the entire pattern. It's always a bit interesting to see this uh, subtle randomness. The other noise is specifically added in the middle section of the animation as it's masked by the directional fourth with a 0, 1, 0 float curve. If you increase the noise scale, you see this relationship more clearly about the moments. It's affected exactly. For historical reason, it's connected to a vector scale. But nowadays, you can see there's a fourth input, which makes your life easier to just connect without this vector scale anymore. This Two noises are linked to a translate position preset. It's not really used here. In practice, you can animate it on the z-axis to achieve the same effect as evoluting the noise. Therefore, it's usually coupled with time info node. But it's not used here anyway. Overall, there were lots of historical outdated places for this setup. Overall, there were a lot of historical outdated places in this setup. I kept them so that you may potentially follow the older tutorials and explanations. On the other hand, I think it's also very interesting to see these historical marks as it signals how far I learned, improved, and how much Blender developed along the way. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.